Agesilaus perished on the shores of Troy, it was Hermes who brought his spirit back to the upper world to spend the last few hours with his wife. When a jealous Hera destroyed her rival Semele, it was Hermes who carried the infant Dionysus to safety. And when his love for mankind caused Prometheus to defy the will of Zeus, it was Hermes who chained Prometheus to a rock. His success in these endeavors earned Hermes the traditional reward for a task well done, which is to say, another task. <laughs> and thus he was summoned to Olympus one day by Zeus and commanded with the task of retrieving Io, the daughter of Anacus of Thessaly, and the latest of Zeus's lovers. To hide her from Hera, Zeus used his awesome power as Lord of the Universe to transform Io into a cow. <laughs> This was not one of Zeus's better conceived plans, for a jealous Hera, rightly suspecting that her husband was up to no good, demanded that he make a gift to her of this paragon of livestock. <laughs> she then tethered Io to a tree and had her watched over by Argus, a giant with a hundred eyes, only two of which were ever closed for rest or sleep. Now, when Hermes was but one day old, he had amused himself by stealing the capital of Apollo. And thus he thought he could, in like manner, retrieve this heavenly heaven. But no sooner had he begun to untie the tethers that held Io that he was seized by the watchful Argus. Little thief, you may tell me your name before I kill you. I'm the god Hermes, son of Zeus and Maya. I'm actually immortal, so you can't kill me. And if I rip your arms and legs off, I'll uh, let's start it off. <laughs> I'm the god Hermes, son of Zeus and Maya, a uh, good friend of Dionysus. In fact, I know he has just finished off a nice batch of wine. If we go over there, we can get ourselves some good drinking. I am Argus Panoptes, slayer of a kid. Who are you that you think yourself worthy to drink with me? All right, choose your drinking companions carefully. I understand that, can't be too cautious. Uh, I have a better idea. I know this place where the nymphs and naiads are so, well, you know. And they would be all over a man, a, a, a giant like you, so well endowed with eyes. <laughs> You talk too much. Immortal God, I will chain you to a rock and daily rip the tongue from your head. Have you any last things to say? Ah, uh, yes, I'd like to recite for you the 13 books of Euclid's Elements of Geometry. <laughs> a point is that which has no part. <clears throat> All right, uh, how about the music? And with that, Hermes pulled out his series, that which we also know as the Pipes of Pan and began to play a pleasant and soothing melody. And as he played, the eyes of Argus began to droop, and one by one they began to close. And when the last of Argus' eyes had closed in sleep, Hermes, mindful of the threat the giant had laid against him, drew his sword and hacked off the head of the giant. And thus it was that I was freed, eventually to be returned to human form. Hera was enraged over the slaying of Argus, but could do nothing more than to use his eyes to adorn the feathers of her favorite bird, the peacock. And Hermes continued to perform other tasks for the gods, and in the fullness of time, his descendants would include the greatest of the Greek heroes, Odysseus the Cunning. But his are other stories. This one is done.